When this gentle farmer found a malnourished lynx on his property, he started feeding it out of the goodness of his heart. Months later, the lynx repaid the favor in an unbelievable way. George was a humble farmer who had taken over the farm from his father. They had a generous plot with their cultivated grains. They had always been hard workers, but their harvest had always brought in just enough to settle even with the costs and add a little to the savings account. He was a lone man who didn't have the opportunity to create a family of his own, and so his favorite companion was his trusty old border collie, Joe. The two of them went everywhere together. Joe would help George out wherever needed and would always ensure that he eventually went to bed at night. After all, running a farm was not a relaxing business. That particular year, the climate was terrible. They oscillated erratically between floods and droughts, so much so that the crops were completely ruined. But the farmer was not the only victim of bad weather, the neighboring forests were also getting battered by terrible winds, flash floods, and forest fires. The local people started to notice that more and more animals were coming out of hiding in search of water and food. It was devastating to see, and everyone was affected in some way or another. George was facing the prospect of having a whole year's harvest go to complete waste. The local town pulled together and tried their best to help each other out where they could, but there simply wasn't much to go around. George found himself falling deeper and deeper into a sense of depression that he was struggling to lift himself out of. He tried not to focus on the impending bad news his harvest might have to offer him and spent more time with Joe. He attempted to do things that he enjoyed, but it didn't do much to help. That's when something interesting happened. It was a gloomy day when George stepped out onto his farm. He was going to do the usual rounds that he always did. It was important that he checked on all of the areas of the farm just in case something bad had happened. It was through doing this that he came across something quite startling. At first, he thought it was just a pile of debris from a storm a few days prior, but as he got closer, he started to see that it was, in fact, an animal, though it was hardly moving. As he advanced closer to it, so much so, in fact, that he was sure it was dead, however, when he touched it, it responded. He was beyond surprised. This animal was in desperate need of help, just from what George could see. He knew that it hadn't eaten in a long time. It was emaciated and covered in mud to the point that he could hardly tell what kind of animal it was. Something inside of him stirred. He knew he couldn't leave the poor creature out there to fend for itself, so he quickly made up his mind. He bent down low and picked up the animal gently. It hardly reacted to his touch, and his concern greatly concerned George. He just hoped that he wasn't too late. He made his way back to the house with the animal in his arms. Joe followed him, filled with curiosity. When he got home, he bathed the animal in some warm water. This is when he saw something even more startling. Right there in his bath was a lynx. He had only ever seen a lynx once before in his life. The beautiful little wild cat was definitely in need of a good meal. So, he managed to get it clean and dried its coat off. Once he managed to get a clean and dried coat off, he warmed up some milk, never losing sight of it. But the animal was curled up on the sofa, still as ever, unresponsive to Joe's warm breath on its fur. George filled a bottle and sat on the sofa next to the cat. He first poured a few drops on its lips, and when he saw that it was licking them greedily, he finally started feeding it. He hoped that if he could get enough fats and calories into the cat, it would find the energy to eat actual food. True enough, this actually worked. After two days of feeding the poor cat intermittently with some milk, it finally managed to get some energy to eat some spare meat George had. After that, it was almost back to normal. The clearest sign of its renovated good health was its restlessness inside the house. It quickly became clear that George needed to let the lynx back out into the wild, but he still felt a pang of sadness at the idea of saying goodbye to the pretty cat. Nevertheless, that day, he let the poor animal back out into the wild. He thought that was the end of it and that he wouldn't see the lynx again, but he was very wrong. That evening, in fact, the lynx came back to his house. 
It stood by his door, crying for food until he let it in. George gladly fed it and kept taking care of the wild cat for months. Its presence kept George's spirits up and helped him get through a tough harvesting season. Then, one day, the lynx just didn't come back. George felt quite abandoned by the animal but figured it must have just gone on with its life. Maybe with a mate that spring brought back an abundance of fruit and grain, and soon enough, George was too busy harvesting to think about his old friend. About a year later, though, something strange started happening in town. There seemed to be more and more bear sightings each night. People were warned to lock their doors and gates to try and prevent the big creatures from entering and raiding homes. George, however, had never had a problem with bears. Joe was his own personal bouncer when it came to unwanted guests, so he quite happily left his back door open for him to run in and out of whenever he needed. However, this soon turned out to be a big mistake. Since George was so confident that the bears wouldn't come near his home, he didn't pay enough attention to the movements in his backyard. It was a cool evening, and George was relaxing on his sofa when he heard a disturbance in the kitchen. He was sure it was Joe and didn't react, but his carelessness was about to cause some big trouble. It was only when George heard another noise that he sat up and looked around. Sure enough, there at his feet was his guard dog, fast asleep. Now George began to panic a little. If Joe wasn't the source of the noise, it must be some other intruder. He could only hope it was a friendly one. However, a few seconds later, a grizzly bear entered the living room. It was huge, and its bloodshot eyes were staring at George. The poor farmer lost his breath almost instantly. He couldn't believe that there was actually a bear in his house. The beast roared, and Joe woke up. When he saw the threat to his master, he didn't hesitate to launch himself at the bear. But the creature swatted him away with a single paw. George watched in horror as his pup slumped on the floor and realized he was probably going to be the bear's next punching bag. All he could think to do was shout at the top of his lungs. He wanted the bear to feel intimidated, but his voice only seemed to make it angrier. The creature rose up on its hind legs and poised itself to attack George. As he lunged forward, the farmer threw himself behind the sofa to protect himself as much as he could. But the impact from the attack never came. Instead, George heard a scuffle and a lot of growling. When he peeked to see what it was, he saw a wildcat attacking the bear with the help of Joe. It was his lynx friend from the year before. It had come back to protect him. The combined effort was too much for the bear. Rather than fighting his two assailants, the beast decided it was easier to just leave, and so he did. George could hardly believe his luck. Thanks to the lynx, he was still alive, and so was Joe. He thought it had forgotten all about him, but it clearly remembered the kindness it had been shown in its moment of need. In some way, this was its way of paying George back for his help. Marlon Cooper has been considering leaving his job and retiring in the past few years. As a member of the Ranger team, he spent most of his life protecting the forest. When he returned to his hometown forest in Montana, he met a beautiful young woman named Bridget, who later became his wife. Cooper had to go through a lot. The couple had a happy marriage and a daughter named Jennifer, who became the meaning of their lives. Bridget knew something about her husband's work, because he had to spend most of his time in the local forest, thus solving the poacher's animal traps. Time flies fast, ruthlessly changing calendar pages. When Jennifer grew up, she went to the University of California to study with her friends. After college, she married and settled there, a true paradise, caressed by sunshine and warm waves. Things seemed to go well, but then bad luck knocked on Malone's door. His wife used to complain about her inner tingling and was very ill. The timid and quiet woman chose to ignore the symptoms and treat them with easy-to-use over-the-counter drugs. The problem is that Bridget often ignores her husband's advice, even though he insists on seeing a doctor as soon as possible, unfortunately, women prefer drugs. Therefore, one morning, the woman felt uncomfortable a few hours after her husband left. Unfortunately, although Mrs. Cooper immediately called the ambulance. When paramedics get there, 
all they can do is announce their condolences. Needless to say, this dealt a great blow to Malone, and his wife was always the closest and dearest person in the world. After his wife died, Mr. Cooper began to look as if he had aged a few years at once. His only source of happiness is to walk into that forest he is familiar with. Cooper enjoyed everything in the forest. One day, during one of his walks, he went farther than usual. It was overgrown with weeds and difficult to overcome, so he walked slowly. Suddenly, his attention was attracted by distant sounds, which sounded more like sighs. He became vigilant. Of course, he rarely used a gun, but in the forest, danger was everywhere. Shortly after the sound repeated, he realized it was coming from a nearby bush. Carefully pushing the bushes away, he saw a terrible sight. Beside the old pine tree, there is a thin bobcat, whose front paws are caught in the steel teeth of the trap. In its eyes, it is an indescribable fear of human beings that M.R. Cooper tried to calm it down. It is obvious that the lynx has spent a long time in the trap of torture and lingered. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, once he released the lynx, it did not show any resistance and it even gave him a lick. The man was puzzled and looked at the miserable animal with pity. Of course, Mr. Cooper realized that without his help, it could not survive or become prey to large predators. That's why he carefully wrapped the lynx in his sack and carried it to his car. He knew the poor lynx was in pain, so he tried to drive as carefully as possible. When they got home, Mr. Cooper examined the bobcat's injured paw and realized it needed some medicine. After treating the wound with a bactericide, the man injected it with antibodies and covered the wound with a blanket. The next day, he repeated the procedure and tried to give it some chicken soup. To his surprise, even though the lynx was very weak, it did not refuse food. He didn't even notice how he began to treat it like a regular pet. Many of his friends tried to persuade him to give up the lynx. In response, Mr. Cooper told them to choose to believe that the lynx will definitely recover. Fortunately, the experienced ranger's intuition is correct. A week later, the lynx stood up for the first time. In memory of his cat who died many years ago, Mr. Cooper began to call Lynx Lilu. As if understanding the words of his rescuer, the lynx twitched its ears and rubbed his hand in trust. For months, Lilu has now fully recovered from her injuries and is walking gracefully around the yard in search of rats and other rodents. Meanwhile, the lynx was in no hurry to return to the forest and rarely left his house. The man felt in his heart that after all he had to go through, the predator would not do any harm. However, something happened soon, which turned everything upside down. The ranger's daughter, Jennifer, came to visit her father with her husband, Austin, and their son, Tony. Needless to say, he is happy about it. He bought groceries in the supermarket for a month and cleaned the house from top to bottom. Only Lilu doesn't understand what happened and stares at the owner who seems to have changed. When Cooper's family walked into the house and chatted happily, the lynx flinched and made a grumpy hiss. His daughter was worried. In response, Cooper smiled and said that he didn't know there were any more loyal and kind creatures on the earth than Lilu. Of course, at that moment, the rangers forgot that Jennifer and Austin had lived in California for many years and were no longer used to wild animals, especially those standing far away from their animals. Three days passed, and at the same time, the lynx not only did no harm to anyone, but even began to enter the little boy's room and sleep by the baby's bed. Meanwhile, Jennifer looks at the forest predator every day and refuses to let it out of her sight. One day, at dinner time, Jennifer ran into the living room, trying to hold her breath and screaming, Dad, your crazy lynx is growling at Tony. I told you it was dangerous. Shoot it. Honey. Lilu is friendlier than ordinary cats. There is no reason to worry about her. The man replied, sighing. Unfortunately, Lilu's behavior began to be repeated almost every night, and no one in the family could understand the reasons behind her behavior. Late one night, Jennifer walked into her father's room with tears in her eyes. Mr. Cooper's face changed and turned white. Then, silently, he took the old gun off the hook on the wall and went to his grandson's room. 
Of course, this person still can't believe that Bobcats will bring any harm to his family. Once he was seen, Lilu's behavior changed immediately, and it began to rub on his legs. It doesn't seem to show any aggression towards Tony. Mr. Cooper wondered. The veteran ranger knows very well that it will never show aggression towards humans. As a result, Mr. Cooper realized that he might have forgotten to pack everything when he hurried to prepare the room for his grandson. He knelt down carefully beside the baby's bed and thoroughly examined the floor and the wall beside it. Suddenly, his hand felt a strange opening in the wall. When he shone his flashlight, his heart cooled and several pairs of small eyes stared at him from the darkness. My god, that's a snake. He cringed instinctively, then quickly ordered his daughter to take her grandson out of the room and asked her to hand him a sack. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, there are five adult snakes, each of which is dangerous to humans. Only two hours later, the seasoned ranger managed to snatch all the snakes, and the creatures turned his little grandson's room into their nest. Mr. Cooper's house is safe again. Only then did he realize that Lilu had been protecting Tony. For Mr. Cooper's relief, his relatives also understood this and thanked the clever lynx. Thank you dear. You didn't let me down. I know you won't do any harm to my family. Cooper whispered with tears in his eyes. As if knowing his master's state, the lynx licked his cheek and made a quiet meow. Since then, Jennifer and Austin are no longer afraid of Lilu. Lynx is not dangerous at all. In fact, it cares for their son very much. He hugged the lynx, stroked the back of its head, and said it was a guardian angel sent from above to protect his family.